I'll start at the beginning. It's always nicer at the beginning. I'll begin with my father's house when I was very small. I live here happy enough with my mother, my brothers, my father. I'm in the meadow now watching my sheep. I'm not thinking of anything. It is the first time I hear the voices. I wasn't thinking of anything. I know only that God is good and that he keeps me pure and safe in this little corner of the earth near Dolmormy. This one little piece of French earth that has not yet been destroyed by the English invaders. Then, suddenly, someone behind me touched my shoulder. I know very well that no one is behind me. I turn, and there is a great blinding light in the shadow of me. The voice is grave and sweet, and I was frightened. But I didn't tell anybody. I don't know why. Then came the second time. It was the noon Angelus. A light came over the sun, and was stronger than the sun. There he was. I saw him. An angel, in a beautiful clean robe, that must have been ironed by somebody very careful. He had two great white wings. He didn't tell me his name that day, but later I found out he was Monsignor of the Blessed Saint Michael. Blessed Saint Michael, excuse me, but you are in the wrong village. I'm Joan, an ignorant girl, my father's daughter. I can't save France. I don't even know how to ride a horse. To you people, the sire de Baudricourt is only a country squire, but to us he is master here. He would never take me to the Dauphin. I've never even bowed to him. Then the blessed St. Michael said St. Catherine would come along with me, and if that wasn't enough, St. Marguerite would go too. But when the army captain loses a battle, and they lose a great many, they can go to sleep at night. I could never send men to their death. Forgive me, blessed St. Michael, but I must go home now. Oh, blessed St. Michael, have pity on me. Have pity, monsieur. Well, he didn't. And that was the day I was saddled with France. And my work on the farm.